Smoke alarms save lives, but some argue they're not saving enough lives. A five in your side consumer investigation found some alarms sound nine times faster than others. On your side, consumer advocate Jen Strathman joins us with the results of her consumer test. These are the smoke alarms we used in our test. They probably look like the ones in your home. And while they all look very similar, they use very different technology. And what we found in our test has some firefighters sounding an alarm. Calls for help are going out. It's about completely engulfed at this point. But people are not making it out alive. Every fire death reopens an old wound for Doug Turnbull. I have a picture of her next to my coffee pot in the morning, and when I make a coffee, a, a cup of coffee every day, I you know, have a little chat with her. His daughter Julie had a bright future, but a house fire ended those dreams in a flash. If the detector did go off, by the time it went off, it was too late. Just a month before her 2005 college graduation. Most people told me that the thing that woke them up was the roar of the fire. At Julie's funeral, Dean Dennis offered his support. His daughter died in a house fire two years earlier. United in grief, these dads began researching the fires. Our kids would probably be alive today had there been photoelectric detectors in the houses. Photoelectric alarms detect smoldering fires faster. But the alarm in most homes uses ionization technology, which more quickly detects fast flaming fires. Manufacturers recommend both or a dual alarm. We bought two brands of each one, numbered them, and put them to the test in a vacant home in Euclid. The Northeastern Ohio Fire Prevention Association hung the detectors in the hallway. Three, two, one, plug. LEDs on. We're hot. And started a smoldering fire in the living room. What we're going to simulate here today is that cigarette butt dropping in between that crack in the sofa. Five cameras caught every angle of the test. More than four minutes after the first sign of smoke, oh, we got one. We heard the first alarm. Number two, that's a photoelectric alarm. 51 seconds later, oh, we got another one going. The other photoelectric brand sounded. Soon after, number three, the dual alarms went off. These use both ionization and photoelectric technology. Six minutes in, only two types of alarms were going off. The smoke alarm in 90% of homes hasn't gone Not off, off yet. yet. Correct. The minutes ticked by seven, eight, nine, ten. Inside, the firefighters had to begin breathing through their oxygen tanks. If you breathe that in, you'd have been in trouble. Finally, the ionization alarms went off. In our test, the ionization detector sounded 9 minutes and 12 seconds after the photoelectric alarm. It's too long, uh, way too long. In a government test, it took even longer, a full 30 minutes. Even with these tests, a state task force that studied the issue for the fire marshal found there is no statistical difference. Every fire is different. Uh, the contents is different. That it's, We just are not comfortable with saying one is better than another. The state fire marshal recommends any alarm even though manufacturers, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and four leading fire safety groups all say you need both alarms for maximum protection. If we didn't have the scenario where we're having such a large amount of fatalities without smoke detectors, then maybe we could, maybe we could uh, you know, turn our attention toward one, one um, technology or another. The fire marshal said there were not working smoke detectors in 90% of last year's fatal fires. But we crunched the same data and found it could not be determined if those detectors were working in the majority of the cases. I really hope maybe some of our legislators get involved in, in this and just take the matter completely out of the state fire marshal office's hands. Because it, there's too many, too many lives are at stake just for this to keep dragging on. While many groups support both types of technology because they detect all kinds of fires, some only support photoelectric, including the International Association of Firefighters. Also, five cities here in Northeast Ohio have passed ordinances that only require photoelectric technology. Hey, Jen, how can people check their alarms tonight to find out which ones they have? Chris, it's really simple. You need to unscrew it and take a look at the front and the back. On this one, I know that it's an ionization alarm because of the word radioactive. It's very small in this fine print here. If you don't see the word radioactive, then you also need to look for a P. That will tell you that it's photoelectric. I have all of these tips, more of our tests on newsnet5.com, and also extended interviews. We also put a map on there so you can see in your home where you need to install smoke detectors to make sure you're protecting your family. On your side, Jen Strathman, News Channel 5.
And our investigation continues on Good Morning Cleveland. We go shopping to show you how to figure out which type of alarm you're buying and why some feel the disclaimer to buy both alarms should be more obvious. Now to some new video from Louisiana.